Well, I think we can get started here now. Good morning, everybody. My name is Lisa Kraft, and I'm a national Medicare marketer with Premier Marketing. And I have the privilege of introducing our presenter, Brian Durheim. He is the Regional Managing Director of Emeritus. And today, Brian, he's going to be doing a walkthrough on PrimeStar, their individual dental and vision products, and showing you why they are a valuable addition to your senior portfolio. So uh, without further ado, uh, Brian, I'll turn it over to you. This is uh, Mr. Brian Durheim. That's fantastic. Thank you so much, Lisa. And thank you for all of you that are taking the time here this morning to learn more about the, the Emeritus Dental Webinar. Um, my goal here today isn't just to purely educate you on our plan. My goal is to try to add as much value as possible. We've got a large group that is on the webinar here today. And so what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to pull kind of from both ends. One end of the spectrum being um, the assumption that there's individuals that are on this call that currently aren't offering dental with their, to their Medicare clients have looked very little into dental. And so I'm going to try to, you know, pull from that spectrum and offer just as, you know, as much kind of um, high level information on how you should look at the dental market, how's best to assess it, and then where specifically Emeritus kind of plays within that market. Um, and, and furthermore, um, I, I want to try to spend some time on um, you know, if you're not selling a lot of dental now, what are some things that we hear in the industry that works well to not only start incorporating it, but to success successfully cross-selling it? Um, and then the other side of the spectrum I want to try to pull from is for those of you that are currently selling dental, you've incorporated it into what you do in terms of kind of your, your Medicare education. You make clients aware that dental is not included with the original Medicare or how dental plan works within the MA if it is included. Um, what I'm going to try to do there for, for those types of individuals, I want to try to do my best to kind of pull from that side and, and give you a little bit more kind of tips and tricks of, of what we see in the industry and, you know, ultimately try to be a benefit um, to that as well. So without further ado, let me kind of um, start by way of a little bit of a background. Uh, Emeritus is, is really a premier dental company in the dental space. Dental is what we do. We've got a couple different divisions. We have a life division. We have a retirement plans division. Um, but at the forefront, we are a dental carrier. We're a top three, top four dental carrier in the country. Um, we're a brand amongst providers that is known. We're a mutual company. We're out of Lincoln, Nebraska, uh, roughly 2,300. I think the number's closer now to 2,400 employees. And we've got office locations all across the country. Um, I'm located myself um, in Minnetonka, Minnesota as well as most of the associates that support this individual dental um, product line that we have. And then in addition to the office locations that you see there, we've got about another 30 offices that are just kind of regional sales offices across the country. We are a, um, if you look at 2017, total revenue is 2.3 billion. I need to update this slide now that 2017 has officially completed. Um, and once again, the majority of that revenue, about 1.3 billion out of the 2.3, is dental. So we're a dental-focused carrier, which is going to be something that's unique and different if you've looked at any other senior dental plans that exist out there. Most of the senior dental plans aren't being participated by the dental carriers because most dental carriers are big in the group space, like Emeritus. And so thus, it's more niche players, more like med, smaller med sub companies that are entering the space. And so it's, it's one item of differentiation right off the bat. We're financially strong. Uh, S&P has us ranked at A+. AMVS, which is the rating agency more um, applicable to the health side of the business instead of the financial side of the business, has us rated at A. Here's our pillars. Here's what we believe in. Here's how we kind of run our business. Um, and, and this is what we feel um, over the years as we've evolved this product line over the last six, seven years that we really see that's most appealing and differentiator for you, the agent. Uh, number one, simplicity. Um, we pontificated at the very beginning when I was a part of launching this product line six years ago that we needed to keep it simple. Well, that guess was accurate. Uh, what we've continued to learn over the years is the simpler, the better. If this is too complicated to describe, uh, it's never going to work. So thus, we try to make our products as simple as possible. Uh, just as importantly, maybe even more importantly, if this process is too complicated to enroll somebody, it's never going to work. Um, thus, we, we focus a lot all around simplicity, whether we're talking about the product or the process or anything in between. 
And the other big thing is a network. And, and this is where I've got a personally nice benefit that I can extend to you, the agents. Uh, Ameris has got one of the largest networks. And within the individual space, it's by far, in a way, the best network. Um, I used not to be able to say that until Meredith purchased the old company that launched this product. It was a smaller insurance company called Security Life. And so uh, I've been on both sides of that fence. And let me tell you, it's, it's much better to have a brand where when your client calls the dentist to see if they accept the insurance, they recognize the brand, and two, have their own network because there's nothing more confusing than having a, a separate insurance company versus a separate network name. Um, and I'll get into more details shortly around the network. And the last but not least, technology and service. We try to leverage as much technology as possible to make the service non-existent. And what I mean by that is, no, we don't have an admin department that's non-existent. Uh, my, my poor choice of words there is really intended to be that if, if we can make technology um, in a way to where it works as you assume that it would work, then the service issues become prevented instead of having to be fixed. Um, to try to relate this to a more practical example, um, we all know that Amazon's kind of taken over the retail world, right? I have a perception that Amazon has good service, but yet I've never called Amazon. It just kind of always worked right the first time. If I order something off of Amazon, two days later, it's there with my Prime subscription. Um, it's, it's just kind of always seems to work the first time. The technology is always simple enough, intuitive enough to where I've never had needed to speak with a customer service rep, but yet in my mind, I've got a perception that Amazon's a good quality company from a service standpoint. And so we're, we're striving to do the same thing. And, and admittedly within our industry, I think we all would agree that our industry is behind relative to lots of the other industries that exist out there in terms of, of, of the perception of the service that is given us. And so therefore, um, we try to do everything that we can to improve that. And, and while there's always a certain component of it where you can continue to work on the, the, the core service side of it, which is you know, training your customer service representatives, appropriate staffing for the peak times of our insurance business, et cetera, all those types of things. Ultimately, long-term, what we continue to strive to do is to focus on our technology to prevent issues instead of having to fix issues. Let me show you our Prime Start Dental Plan. Here's what's cool. Um, just as of uh, Friday, two days ago, two business days ago, we're approved in all 50 states again, which is really exciting. Um, we, uh, we were at about 48 states. We got to 49 at the beginning of the year. Now we're officially back into all 50. So I'm excited to say, regardless of where you live or where your clients live, we've got a product for you, um, which is pretty rare. With that said, um, you've got 50 different DOIs who have 50 different ideas on what dental insurance should look like. And so therefore we can't, there isn't the plan design out there that you can pick that all 50 will approve as a rubber stamp as is. They all have got their little small things that they want to change and tweak. Uh, so with that said, uh, we do have some state specifics. So I'm not going to run through each one of the state specifics today. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the what we call like the base plans or the generic plans. That is good in about roughly 43 of the 50 states. Just know that if you're in one of these seven states, the plans are slightly different. Generally speaking, though, many of the themes about the plans are the same across the board. So I would ultimately say is if you like the plan that you see, but you've got business in one of the, the state-specific states, um, I would assume that your perception of the plan wouldn't change um, given that. In some situations, the, the, the plan change is super, super minor. Um, in, some, in some instances, it's a little bit more drastic, but ultimately we try to keep it as close as possible. So we have two plans. We keep it very simple, back to simplicity. We've got just two plans. We, we used to have 27 whenever we first, uh, we first launched this product. We had 27 and, and me and a couple others were like, whoa, 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 whoa. Let's, let's pull this back, let's simplify this, let's relaunch this. Uh, so we've got two plans. And with each one of these two plans, you have a network choice. So I'll get more into that in a little bit. So we've got two plans with network choice. And so really I, you could say we have four, but in reality it's two. The two plans are called Advantage and Advantage Plus. Advantage Plus is the first plan I'm gonna show you um, because it's our most popular. Uh, roughly 65 to 70% of our enrollments in any given day are the Advantage Plus. Here's how the Advantage Plus plan works. You've got preventative, basic, and major. And for those of you that um, haven't looked at dental before, 
or don't sell it on a consistent basis. Um, dental is always broken down into those three categories, preventative, basic, and major. With the preventative services, that's your cleanings. It's, you're going to get two cleanings exams per year, 100% coverage, and furthermore, the deductible isn't applicable towards preventative services, which is really big. Just about all plans out there, you're going to see not only will they have a deductible that's applicable, but they usually won't even cover 100%. The other thing you've got to look out for is x-rays. Many times, um, x-rays aren't covered underneath preventative services with these senior dental plans. The, the bite wing x-rays for us are. So we've got very strong preventative. Basic services are filling into simple extractions. And what we do is we offer what we call a graded benefit, um, which allows the customers, the clients, to receive day one coverage with no waiting periods. So they get some coverage right away, then after a year, that coverage increases. And so with basic services, they're gonna get 50% right away, instead of having a waiting period of six months, which is the common. And then after that one year, they'd be at 80%. With major services, it essentially includes all the large stuff. There's nothing intentionally omitted from it. So while you only see eight or nine procedures there, to, you know, it's, it's intended to be all comprehensive. Um, one thing that is commonly not covered that is covered on this plan is implants. And that's important if you're working with the senior market. More and more seniors are getting implants. Out of all of our procedures um, that exist in the dental world, implants is the fastest growing utilizer um, out of everything. So and we only see that increasing. Um, so it, it's important to note that implants are covered, which is nice. We offer 15% coverage day one, 50% after a year. So notice that we've got day one coverage on everything, which is which is kind of one of our sticking points. We're the, the only company that's gonna offer day one coverage on major, as well as orthos, which you see there in the top right screen. Um, one reason why we do that, as well as some of these other things that you see in the plan, they're a little bit different, is what we're, you know, one of our secret sauces, or it's probably too much, not too much of a secret because I've been talking about it for quite some time, so I'm sure, I'm sure others have heard it at some point. But one thing that we strive to continue to do is to emulate group insurance whenever possible through the plan design. Group insurance and individual insurance will never be the same. But what we do is we try to spend our claimed dollars when we structure a plan to where instead of mimicking the rest of the individual market, we mimic the group market. That's why we don't have a deductible on preventative services. That's why x-rays are covered underneath preventative. Um, that's why we've added a plan that has implant coverage. That's why we give day one benefits on, on all of these. Uh, that's why we offer a plan that has a $2,000 maximum. All of these things are actually quite intentional. And what we found over the years, is that has really helped with persistency and what we found is that's really helped with cutting back on the amount of work that you the agent need to do after you've put a policy in force and our thesis behind that is if this plan works as your client expects it they will be generally happy with it if it doesn't work as expected they generally are going to be unhappy with it Despite how well you may describe the plan to them, if they are retiring, what type of dental insurance do they have their entire life, assuming that they they work for an employer? They had group insurance. That's what they're used to. And while group insurance will never be individual insurance and vice versa, um, there's small little things that we can do to the plans that, that emulate it, emulate group insurance. And so therefore, if this plan is similar to what they're used to, they're probably gonna love it. When they go get their cleanings done, which is usually the first thing they go get done, and they see that they don't, they're not out of pocket anything with our insurance, it's gonna be somewhat as expected because that's how life has always worked for them with dental insurance. If you were to offer them a plan that only covers you know cleanings at 70%, but it has a three month waiting period before they can get those cleanings, uh, there's a $100 deductible, and oh, by the way, there's, um, you know, the x-rays aren't covered, they're gonna get their, their first bill and they're gonna go, what the heck is this? You know, I remember the agent kind of talking about the dental plan, but this doesn't seem right. This doesn't seem like a good deal. This doesn't seem like a good insurance plan. And now this is all for not. You know, now not only are they calling you, but now they're upset. 
And now you've got a situation where your dental product has potentially put at risk your entire portfolio suite of products that you've placed with this customer. Then dental's not worth it. But if dental can be truly additive in the way that we try to go about it, um, then it is worth it in our mind. And so that's why we do what we do with some of those plans. So I feel like that's a little bit of a long tangent. Let me come back to the product. Let me, let me show you this other product, the Advantage. This is our, our little bit more of our affordable plans, $1,000 maximum. Uh, the preventive services work exactly the same, two cleans and exams per year, 100%. But what we do this a little bit unique on this plan is we've combined basic and major services all into one category, admittedly to keep the cost down, but what that does do is keep it simple. And so thus, everything is all covered at the same rate, 15% day one, 50% after a year. So something like a filling um, or something bigger like uh, you know, a tooth extraction, dentures, crowns, root canals are covered at 15% day one, 50% after a year. Another tip for those of you that are um, that are selling dental already, um, especially if you're selling our plan where you, you're already leveraging the fact that we offer some day one benefits. Definitely keep in mind when you're talking about the immediate benefit that this plan can offer, um, don't forget about the network. And the reason why is, is, is underneath the context of immediate benefit, the network is just as big, if not sometimes bigger of a value than the insurance itself. The average network discount is 32%. So if you're speaking to an individual that needs to get some work done, they know that a root canal is, you know, is around the corner. Um, our down plan can be put in place and it will cover that root canal, believe it or not. As long as the work hasn't been started, um, that is fine. We'll cover it. There's no uh, pre-existing conditions or anything of that sort. And so we will cover it. Um, but if you offer this plan with gun honus and tell them, hey, I'm going to cover 15%, while they'd be money ahead um, to get that 15% coverage, they might as well take it if they already know the work needs to get done. They might also balk at it and go 15%. Uh, you know, I don't even know if, if, if it's worth to hit the, if, if, if it's worth to submit this application for 15% coverage, that's not very much. Um, you may get that. So in those instances, remind them about the network value. Cause if they go to one of the Emeritus network providers, that's going to, cut down the cost by another 32%. So first they're going to get a 32% discount off of that root canal, which is typically about $1,500. And then furthermore, they're also gonna get the insurance in addition. So I don't know what the exact math is off of 32% plus 15%. It's kind of like when you, you go shopping and there's two different sales going on and they can overlap. It's not that you can just add the two. They're kind of separate in that regard, if, if that's making sense. But you know, give or take, it's probably gonna be a net savings of the client of about 45%. Uh, and, and in a few slides here, I've got a specific example that we can walk through that, that shows that math much more eloquently than what I try to do in my, my example here uh, over the phone. Um, how are the claims paid? Or to say it another way, what, what are the network options look like? We give the best of both worlds. We, um, we, we put those two plans available side by side with network choice. And so you could buy either one of those plans, Advantage or Advantage Plus, um, as a network plan, which is designed to go in network. Um, in the dental world, we would call that a MAC plan or a MAB plan, as some call. Um, or you could buy either one of those plans as a UCR plan, usual customer plan, which is much more of the gnome, uh, the, the, the kind of the standard within the senior dental space. And then they can go to any dentist. Um, the, the network, though, is important. I wouldn't overlook it. And, and it's two reasons. One, the value to the customer, the discounts, et cetera. But two, Network usage has really grown over the last five, six years. Five, six years ago, when we launched these plans, we didn't offer network plans. You know, we had the, the preconceived notion that seniors want to go to their dentist. They don't want to be steered towards a network, just like how they want to go to their doctor. So let's just offer indemnity plans, UCR plans. And so that's what we did. Um, but what's interesting to know and this is me kind of pulling from the side of those of you that are already selling dental to try to give you a little bit more kind of tidbits on this market. The usage of the network has dramatically increased. Uh, five years ago when we finally did add a network plan, our network utilization was less than 15% within our senior population. Today it's north of 50%. I think the number is 51, 52%. So within a five year time frame, we've gone from 15% north of 50%. Uh, but what's even more telling is if you just look at recent sales, 
look at recent enrollments because those numbers reflect our entire block and lots of those policies have been in the books for a long time. You look at our recent enrollments over the last six to 12 months and you look at the network plans that are purchased, roughly 75% of the time, seniors are buying network plans now, not UCR plans. Now UCR plans are more expensive, but it, it goes against what I think our industry has a perception on with seniors. I could hypothesize that, um, that we believe part of that has to do with the popularity of MA plans. As you sell customers on the idea and the concept of an MA plan, leveraging the network so in that way they can curtail the health costs, it's a very common, or I should say an easy transition to take that same philosophy for dental because that's exactly what's going on. But um, either way, the customer can save money, not only in, in the, the, the procedures by using the network, but they're also going to save money on the premium for the insurance product. So it's a, it's, it's a win-win, and I think that's a big reason why so many people are buying the network plans. Uh, speaking of network, um, as I mentioned, we've really got the best network out there for the individual space. You know, we compete with kind of the top two, top three dental carriers on the group side, MetLife and Guardian most notably. Um, but in, in the individual space, it's, it's kind of a space that we can really control from, uh, from a network strength. We've got over 450,000 access points nationwide. We have an average discount of, of 32%. Um, provider persistency is way above industry average. And um, I, uh, I misspoke earlier. I was thinking it was 51, 52% in terms of network utilization. It's 559 as of uh, qu quarter three of 2017, uh, probably in the coming weeks, I'll ha we'll have access to the data that would show quarter four, uh, discount 32.1%. So that's a, that is as what raw the data is what it comes. Um, so that's, I don't wanna say hot off the presses, but you know, that that's straight from kind of our network reports. Um, for those of you that aren't selling dental right now, um, let me give you some stats on why I think you should consider adding dental. Other than the fact that out of all the ancillary products that you could sell with your Medicare clients, dental is by far the easiest in my opinion. Um, other than it being easy, I also think it's in the most demand. People will ask you for a dental plan. Nobody's going to ask you for a hospital indemnity plan. Now, hospital indemnity plans and many of the other ancillary products that exist um, in the senior market fit great needs. But it's a sale. You've got to educate them on what hospital indemnity is, build up the need, make them understand why they need it, and then sell them on it. With dental, they know what dental is. Everybody knows what dental insurance is. Many people are probably already asking you for dental insurance if you're not proactively bringing it up. We did a survey, and what we found is out of those that are turning 65 and coming off of group insurance, 71% of those individuals intend to buy or keep their dental plan. But yet what they find out is nine times out of 10, they can't keep their dental plan. Group retiree benefits are going away like crazy. Uh, and even furthermore, if they do have group retiree benefits, it's unlikely that they extend those benefits to dental. It's usually just only health and they're trying to just hold on to those. Uh, so therefore, if you're somebody that works at T65 list, which is a tough list to work by the way, uh, so I commend you for those that stick with it, 71% intend to buy a dental plan, so the demand is there. If you look at just the senior population as a whole, 58% of the seniors in this country do have some sort of form of dental insurance currently. The average senior spends $1,154 a year on dental. That's not a survey, that's, that's a claim study. Uh, based upon our block of $1.3 billion of dental, um, if we look at those that are 65 plus, submitted claims is $1,154. And that number continues to go up. And the reason why it's going up so much isn't because dental costs are going up, it's utilization is going up. Um, generally speaking, at a very macro level, what's occurring um, in the last five or 10 years is dentists are much more inclined to preserve as many natural teeth as possible. Um, they found in the later years of life by an individual having more natural teeth vis-a-vis uh, -vis having dentures, uh, especially a full set of dentures, that they've linked preserving natural teeth to other health benefits that help them later in life. And so a dentist is much more reluctant than what they were 10, 15, 20 years ago 
of just pulling their teeth and putting in dentures. And so therefore, um, while that's a better health benefit, it costs more to do that. Just like if you make the decision that you want to eat only organic food, that's a health benefit, but it costs more. And so it's a little bit of a financial decision in addition. Um, if a client can't afford an implant, they can't afford an implant, so therefore that leaves a dentist with less options, and their, op their best option might just be dentures. But, you know, if the client has the financial wherewithal or the ability to make that decision, they are better off to preserve as many natural teeth as possible. Um, in doing so, that's going to lead to more care for those teeth that have been preserved instead of just pulling them. Um, so implants come up more frequently now than what they used to. Root canals related to gums come up a little bit more frequently. Crowns, you know, all those types of things that um, that, that historically have been kind of avoided in terms of the high cost of dental. Are, are now being almost exacerbated by the fact that people have learned and dentists have learned that it's much better to retain those teeth if when possible. Uh, I mentioned I was going to give you an example of the savings we can offer. So this will do a much better job of doing so. Let's look at a crown together, and this is based upon a Minneapolis zip code. Uh, a crown in Minneapolis costs $1,117, and dental varies across the country. It, it, to a certain degree, it kind of echoes and mimics um, MedSup costs and rates. And so if you're in an area where MedSup costs a lot, um, if you're in a higher cost area, dental likely is a higher cost area. So many of the coast states are higher cost. So like um, Washington, Oregon, and California are some of the highest. Um, New York, New Jersey, those are those are fairly high in terms of dental costs. And so um, these costs can vary. But but Minneapolis is kind of a nice one, other than the fact that I'm from Minneapolis. Um, it's kind of a middle of the road. It, it's it's not intentionally low. It's not intentionally high. If anything, it's it's, it's maybe just uh, you know on a scale of one to ten, it's probably a six is where I'd peg it at. Uh, so an average crown in Minneapolis costs one thousand one hundred seventeen dollars for for um, for just your typical dentist. With our network discount, we can bring that cost down to seven hundred and forty eight dollars. So there's an instant savings there. And then when you overlay the 15% insurance somebody could get on getting a crown tomorrow, now their cost is only 636 vis-a-vis -vis what would have been 1117. That's a 43% savings. If you were to take the same situation, but let's make the assumption that the client had the higher benefit. They had the 50% coverage because the plan's been in place for one year. Now their out-of-pocket costs Instead of 1117, are only 374. That's a net savings of 66 percent. Bottom line, we give more value to your customers for their dental insurance than anybody else. When, if you were to do a similar chart with any other dental company out there, no one is going to give your client more savings than Emeritus. That's dental. Um, so before I leave dental and move to vision, as my next slide implies, what I want to kind of reiterate is we do want to take questions. There's a large group of you today, uh, so probably the easiest way to facilitate that is submit those to the Q&A function, and Lisa and myself here at the end will run through all those questions live, and I'll do my best to, uh, to, to give open and honest answers there. So if there's questions on the dental as I went through it, uh, please go ahead and submit those questions. Vision. Vision is dominated by two networks, IMED and VSP. And I don't know how it happened because historically they don't like to be paired with each other, but somehow or another, we got two different vision plans that have both of the networks. And so you've got the best of both worlds by partnering with the Meritus for your vision. Because between IMED and VSP, they control, I think virtually 100% of the eye doctors. Um, generally speaking, IMED has the big mall store type stores like LensCrafters, like Target, like Pearl Vision, the big brands. Generally speaking, VSP has really all the independent eye doctors that exist out there, kind of the ma-pa shops. Uh, they do have Costco, which is a really big win for a VSP, and they do have about half of the Walmarts. With iMed, you get eye exams once per year. You get glasses every other year. Um, you can get the glasses, though, right away, so it's day one benefits, just like our dental. And you've got a copay schedule here. You've got a copay and an eye exam of $25. You've got copay on your lenses of also $25, regardless of whether it's single or bifocal or trifocal. Then the frames are separate, 
and the frames are given a $130 allowance. If somebody would like to buy a higher quality frame at a more expensive price, they could do so. They'd just pay the difference. They would get a discount on that additional difference though. Uh, for all that, you can get that plan for $10.67 a month, and that's a nationwide rate. VSP plan is very similar. Uh, the biggest difference in these is really the network. The, you know, with the vision, I wouldn't, I wouldn't worry too much about all the details on what the product covers. I would just more focus on where do they want to utilize the benefits? Do you want to go to like a pro vision or do you want to go to an independent eye doctor? That's how I would sell vision and keep it as simple as that. Uh, one more tip before I get into the, the VSP plan. Um, 50, roughly 50 to 52 percent depends on when you cut the data. That's why I say roughly. I pride myself in being fairly analytical for albeit being a sales guy per se. Um, but depending on how you cut the data, if you cut the data most very recently, looking at the last six months of our enrollments, 52% of our dental plans include a vision enrollment. It's a very simple add-on. When you're in the tool and you're enrolling for dental, it's simply a box that's going to pop up that I'll show you momentarily. If you want to add the vision, um, you ask them where they utilize their benefits. If they tell you Pearl Vision, you sell them the IMED plan. If they tell you independent eye doctor, you sell them the VSP plan. But 52% is your cross sell right there. Um, there's no sale. There's nothing fancy you've got to do about it. You just got to simply ask. It's as simple as that. Uh, so, so with that said, VSP, the eye exam is $10. The lenses are your $20 copay. So your copays are less. And your frame allowance is higher, $150. The other way this VSP plan is a little bit richer is you get the glasses every year. And so that is definitely a benefit for someone like myself who wears contacts predominantly, but still has a pair of glasses sitting around for, you know, whenever the contacts just don't want to agree with you that specific day. You can kind of stagger that benefit and, and ultimately get, get insurance benefit uh, eventually on both your glasses as well as your contacts. Monthly rate for that's a little bit more it's $16.34. If we do the exact same example, um, in terms of kind of the benefit or the, the discount that the insured would receive, um, this assumes that someone's getting an eye exam and contacts. They're getting the contact fit and follow up and the contact lenses. They're out of their retail pricing would be $515 in that instance, but with the IMED plan, it's only $175. So they're money ahead as long as they use the benefits. Uh, and then the Prime, Prime Star Choice plan, which is the VSP plan, if they get glasses instead of contacts, um, you know, we've got a UV coating that we're assuming here, a scratch coating. Uh, all in, their total costs are 470 uh, but with the VSP plan, they'd only be out 80 bucks. So pretty big savings. So if you like those plans and you want to get started, our first step is appointment. And the reason why is, is because we issue every agent their own customized hyperlink. Um, and, and to do that, we need to get you appointed first. So I, I would encourage you um, to start with the appointment process. Once you get appointed, you'll receive this email saying welcome to Ameris, and it's going to include your URL for your own website. And with that, I've got screenshots, but let's see if I can go live here and flip on over to uh, the website. Okay. If someone could be so kind, if, if can, can you guys let me know if you can see my screen here? It says dental and vision plans to fit your needs. Someone uh, just like send me a message in the in the chat or the the Q and A here. I know I can Lisa. see it, Brian. Mm -hmm. Oh, awesome! Even better yet. Okay, cool. Thank you. So we're going to go ahead and and um, you're going to put in your client zip code. It's going to ask, do you want to see dental or vision? Who will be covered? And the covered start date. We can do next day effective dates. Um, so you can literally start the plan tomorrow, or you can push it further out if you would like. You hit see plans. The plans are going to populate, uh, and we see the Advantage Network Plan, 2860. You see the Advantage Plus Network, $41. I mean, for 41 bucks, they can get a $2,000 benefit. They get their cleanings covered at 100%. There's no deductible at that. I mean, they're, they're going to spend three to $400 just in cleanings alone annually. So as long as they can just go get their cleanings done, they're, they're going to really be, you know, paying for the insurance one way or another. It's just a matter of whether do they want to pay for the cleans or they want to pay for the insurance. If they get the insurance, then they're money ahead because if anything else comes up, uh, like a basic or major service, we're going to give them some coverage for it. 
And then you've got uh, the non-network plans, Avanged and Avanged Plus. You know these are non-network because they don't have the word network in the title, and they also say freedom to use any dentist. Or in comparison, these ones say designed for those who will utilize an Emeritus Dental Network provider. If you wanted to view the details and kind of see what I showed you on those PowerPoint slides, you could do so. It lays it out all very nicely. The millennials call that, uh, you know, quality UX, UI UX from a technology standpoint, which is user experience. It's a top-down display. You're not jumping around from page to page to page. Uh, it's, it's, it's by far and away the best enrollment tool for dental, probably the best enrollment tool for Medicare, period. It's also consumer approved. We're the first tool to be consumer approved six years ago. Uh, the, the first other dental consumer and tool just got approved <laughs> about three months ago. So we're, we're glad to see that more and more are starting to kind of uh, offer you agents quality, um, quality processes from a service standpoint, not just focused on products. So let's say you want to purchase this plan here. You hit purchase. You can check out or view the vision options. And once again, you can use this as an agent enrollment tool or you can send this link to your customers and they can enroll themselves. You can put the link on your website, whatever you want to do. Uh, here's the IMED plan and here's the VSP plan. Let's say you hit add coverage. It updates the pricing. And let's proceed to check out. You're going to put in all of your clients' information. Actually, let me do this. Only just by way of being a little bit more efficient. Um, I've got slides of this, but that way you don't have to sit here and watch me type. I didn't do it, but you can click on the provide. There's a provider link there. You can see all the providers. We just updated this tool, so it's, it's nice. Um, here we go. Here, proceed to check out. You're going to enter in all their information, and you've already got this info. If you're if you've helped them with Medicare before, if you're if you're helping them with Medicare on the spot, um, you don't need to. See, what's cool about our enrollment tools? You don't need to get a wet signature. You don't need to get an online authentication. You don't need to call into our call center to confirm. None of that stuff. You can literally just enroll um, the client. And so if you're doing face-to-face -face sales and you're sitting with them in their kitchen or if they came to your office, um, you can talk to them about the dental plan, let them know that you're going to enroll them and submit the application whenever you get back to your office. Um, it's as simple as that. If you're, if you're doing telesales and doing everything over the phone, um, we do ask that you record those calls, no different than all of your other Medicare enrollments that you do. And then um, there's a script right here. Um, this authorization grant of fraud notes that you would read aloud. That's kind of specifically for telesales. Uh, the payments, credit card, or bank checking account, automatic on a monthly basis. Uh, oh, here's another quick tip for you guys. The, the payment is always going to be whatever the effective date is. So we don't do like a prorated amount and then charge on the first or anything like that. We just keep the payment on the effective date. And so if you select the, pay, the effective date to be the first, the payment will be charged to their credit card or pulled from their checking account on the first of every month. If you select it for the 15th, it'll be always on the 15th. And this is the last page, this is a review page. Um, this just kind of gives you a, a, a review of all the plan details that you've got in the shopping cart. You hit submit and you're done. Now here's what's cool. Here's where the magic actually happens though. Once you hit submit, you instantly are gonna receive a confirmation email like this. And your client is also gonna receive a similar confirmation email. We do that, so not only for the sake of just trying to be quick, but how many times have you called up to, you know, either, you know, Lisa and Michelle at Premier or the home office of a carrier and say, like, hey, I submitted the application. Where is it at? Client's following up with me. All that stuff is, you know, that just that bogs you down. You know, all that admin work is, is a big inefficiency of an agency model. And so what we try to do is we try to streamline it. And for us, it's even that much more important to streamline it because we're dental. We're a lower price premium product vis-a-vis -vis a core product line like Medicare or health or life or annuities, et cetera. And so uh, you instantly get a confirmation email. So you don't have to call the home office or, or call Lisa. Um, if the client wants to utilize their benefits right away, tell them to print off the email, bring that email in to the provider, and then the provider can call us to confirm the benefits. Otherwise, they'll have their ID cards in about five to seven days. Um, from there, everything is automated. And so we issue, give or take, 500 policies a day. 
um, twenty five hundred a week. Uh, it, it goes up during open enrollment, obviously AEP. Um, but not one of those policies is touched by a human in our admin department. It's all automated. So you hit submit, you, you receive a confirmation email. There's an overnight API feed, not to use tech lingo. Um, there's an overnight API feed to where it fills, uh, feeds into our service center's uh, admin um, system. And so when you call it the next day, they know that the policy is already in the system. You'll, they'll be able to find them. There's no one keen in this application after the fact. Uh, the fulfillment is automatic to the printer on an API. And so this whole process of fulfillment and issuing a policy is all automated. And so um, you should have the benefit, or at least I'll speak to as a carrier rep, I don't receive many calls, almost never, where there is some sort of administrative issue with a policy being issued. Um, because everything is automated in that regard. So I don't receive calls of like, oh, hey, this one didn't receive their ID card or, you know, we called up and this one person wasn't in the system. All those kind of one-off situations is, is a result of human error. And so that's where we're trying to leverage technology to prevent the service issues, not fix the service issues. Um, with that said, um, we don't we don't ignore you know, kind of the, the human element of the service side. Um, as a matter of fact, we kind of pride ourselves on, on something specifically. There's something called a benchmark portal, which is a uh, an agency that grades call centers. And what I like about it is it's not just insurance call centers. It's call centers from all industry. Um, they don't break it down by industry, though. What they do is they break it down by call center size, small, medium, and large. We fit into the medium category of a call center. Um, and I believe we have roughly 150 call center um, representatives that are doing admin related work on our various blocks of business. Um, we've won this benchmark portal now 11 years in a row. In a row. And um, what's cool about it is, and, and there's various metrics. Some of them are qualitative, some of them are quantitative, like you know, average talk time, you know, first call resolution, average hold time, those types of things. But what's cool about it is in the insurance space, just about, just about all the insurance carriers are partaken in the benchmark portal. And from time to time, um, they will win the benchmark portal. Many of the, um, many of the blues um, win this from time to time. So if you do any business with the various blue crosses in your respective areas, you've probably heard them mention from time to time that they've won this. But there isn't one insurance carrier that has won this two years in a row or three years in a row or four years in a row. They've won it before, but they never won it back to back. We've won it 11 times in a row, which is a record for the benchmark portal. So I, I don't say all that to say that we're perfect. Um, but what I do say is, is we take the admin side um, very seriously, whether it's, it's the technology part that we're trying to leverage or it's more of the traditional human touch that we're trying to leverage. The service hours bless their heart. Somehow or another, we've got folks that are willing to work in Lincoln, Nebraska and and uh, we've got one up near Norfolk, near Premier, which is in Wayne. We've got folks in San Antonio. They're all over, um, but, but they're open until midnight, Monday through Thursday. And then uh, they must just celebrate like crazy on Fridays because they get out at 6.30. So it's almost like a half a day, I, I would assume, for those that are in the second shift. Um, but with that, I want to end with a thank you. I thank you for all of you that have joined. Um, very much appreciative. Hopefully this was helpful. Um, I'm trying to think um, as we're as you know, once again, if there's questions, send those in. We're going to we're going to review them as you're thinking about your questions. I'll, I'll, I'll leave you with one last thing. One thing that I usually talk about that I haven't thus far is cross selling ideas and tips. Um, and this applies for both sides of the spectrum, whether you're selling dental now very successfully, whether you're not. Here's how I would cross sell dental. I would cross sell dental in conjunction with your Medicare enrollment. If you want to be successful with selling as much dental as possible, you need to do it when you're selling the Medicare. Does it matter if it's MA or if it's MedSup? If it's MedSup, it's like peanut butter and jelly. You have to be selling to them. I've got call center, I've got one call center in particular that that when they sell MedSup, 90 plus percent of the time they sell them dental. So it can be done. I'm not pontificating that I think this will work. It's working. People are doing it. Um, but independent agencies in the field are doing it the least relative to everybody else. Um, so there's a huge opportunity to be certain that you're kind of filling all the voids that your client is in need of in terms of the insurance solutions as they go on to Medicare. Um, so how specifically would I do it other than just selling it? I'm alongside when you're doing the Medicare enrollment. Um, I would incorporate it into your overall Medicare education process. I would make them aware upfront um, that dental is not included, not by giving them a dental brochure, but by referencing Medicare enrollments or the plan summary of the MA. So if you're selling, if you're selling MedSup 
and you're talking about original Medicare. Open up the Medicare and you guidebook, go to the page that shows all the services that aren't covered, and guess what's at the top of the list? Dental and vision. Use that by way of pointing it out to them. Tell them that you've got a dental plan you can show them later. You don't want to derail the conversation and leave Medicare. Um, but use that by way of kind of introducing the concept. Um, and then do your, oh, by the way, remember we spoke about dentals not included. Many people do the, oh, by the way, but the difference from those of successful versus not successful is they've already mentioned it. And so it's truly an, oh, by the way, remember we spoke about this. It's not a, oh, by the way, um, we haven't spoke about this. And I realize you're already exhausted because we just did an hour education on Medicare and we finally picked a plan for you. But I also want to tell you one more thing. It's too late at that point. Um, the other thing that others will do is they'll incorporate into group pricing. Uh, so what I mean by that is, is not that they're misrepresenting what is inclusive, but you know Medicare is very competitive. Everyone has access to the same rates. Anyone can enroll a client. So one way of differentiation would be if you're, say, quoting a med sub policy and you're comparing plan F to plan G to plan N, and you're talking about the differences, um, you'll get some clients will start to shop around and go, well, you know, what, you know, what's the best rate on a plan G that I can get from you? You know, and you'll go through your carriers that you'll see like on your CSG tool and you'll see your top three, top five carriers, uh, da, 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 da. Um, try to take a little bit more of a holistic view. And so try to understand everything that they might need from an insurance standpoint. So a dental and vision is our obvious one. See if there's anything else. Maybe there's an opportunity for a hospital indemnity or a cancer plan. Um, and then group them all together and sell them as a package. And so then what you do is, is you get off of this rate game that we're all into a race to zero. And you can take a much more holistic approach and get off of rates and get more back on benefits and say like, well, you know, uh, Mr. Smith, for everything that um, that we spoke about, you know, if you, if you want to, if you want to essentially replace everything that you're going to be losing through your employer, which as a reminder, which is your health insurance, which is your dental and your vision insurance, and which is um, a, a whole life policy, you know, in aggregate, all that's going to run $190. Now you're no longer talking about why your Plan G carrier is better than the other agent's plan G's carrier given the $3 rate discount. Now, you're, giving, you're differentiating yourself in terms of the way you're positioning the products because now you're offering a solution. And furthermore, you've bundled the dental in a way that isn't misleading, but it's going to ensure many more people are gonna buy dental from you. And in, in doing so, if you can figure out a way that works for you uh, and laying that out, that is how you can have, have achieve cross sell rates of 70, 80, 90% because folks want this. Um, and if they're, if they're made aware of, of everything that they need to replace, and if they're made aware of a quality solution, and if you can position it in a way to where it, it kind of removes the pain points, um, there are many that are doing thousands and thousands and thousands of dental enrollments every single year. So with that, um, Let's go ahead and, and let's jump into questions, and then maybe if, if, if there's up, maybe some of those questions will kind of spark some of these other ideas that I'm happy to share with everyone. So, Great. Uh, Lisa, do you have uh, you have the questions pulled up? Yeah, there's just a few. Uh, first one is: Are these slides available for additional viewing? Yeah, sure. Um, what I could do is, is I can send them to you, Lisa, and then you can just distribute okay. to those that have interest. Yep. Perfect. Uh, the next one, is there a paper app for those who don't use a computer, or do we bring them to the office? <laughs> um, whether you bring them to the office or not is up to you. Um, I can't answer that question, but no, there's not a paper app. Someone very intentionally, um, because if we have that paper app, then we ha we don't have everything that I just bragged about, which is all the automation on the back end. And then there's a human element component of it. So we made a choice at some point about three years ago that no longer works with our business, but I encourage you to kind of adopt the same. Um, and so this is very, very simple. Um, so maybe you've got, you know, an admin or someone in your family or, or a spouse that can help you with it, but no, 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 no paper apps. Okay. Um, is this also for under age 65? Yes, it is. Yeah, thanks for pointing that out. This is all ages. Um, we have about a 65-35 split in our business, 65% over 65, 35% under 65, and that's predominantly because the senior space is where we focus. 
that's where we kind of focus our internal sales efforts. Um, we partner up with many of the FMOs. Um, but with that said, there's still, you know, there's still a market that exists on that under 65 side and, and our products work very well on that side still too. Mm-hmm. All right. Next one. How long after writing business do we get paid? Yeah, good question. It's the first of the following month. And so with us, um, you get paid commission in conjunction with us receiving payment. And we receive payment in conjunction with what you select as the effective date. And so what we'll do is we're in the month of February now. And so we'll take all the February effective dates, whether it's the 1st of February or the 28th of February, and we'll pay out commission on all those policies on March 1st. Okay, great. Um, next one, are individuals required to participate in the plan for a minimum amount of time? They're not. Of course, we'd like them to stay as long as possible, but they're free to cancel at any point. How does the dentist get paid if they don't accept emeritus? Is it reimbursing the customer? Um, the, good question, because many confuse this topic. When I, when I, when I Dentist says that they don't accept emeritus or a specific dentist, or excuse me, a, a specific insurance company's network. There's really a follow-up question that needs to ha- that needs to be asked. Um, what they're saying is when they don't accept it, what they're saying is is they, they typically what they what they mean is they they aren't a part of our network, and that's fine. The follow-up question is is will you submit the claim to the dental company, or do I need to do that? Because that's a separate question. Nine times out of ten. Even though they might not participate in our our network, they'll still submit the claim. And the reason why is because there's an online system that was created about four or five years ago that um, it, it's fairly expensive for the carriers to integrate with. But we, um, we have really all of the large group carriers have. I would assume none of the individual senior dental carriers have other than us. And it makes it very simple for the dentist to submit a claim to us uh, electronically with just a couple of clicks of a button. And so by being on that tool, I have you know, since then as more and more of our claims from providers come from this online um, tool that exists within the provider community, very rarely will they say like, no, you deal with it. We're not going to submit the claim because it's just so simple for them. You know, they, they see us on the list they can hit boom, 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 and they've submitted the claim on behalf of the client. Um, but if they are a little bit more old school um, or just for whatever reason reluctant to even submit the claim, um, then it would be, as the, as the question was posed, uh, a reimbursement back to the client. The client would then submit the claim to us, and we would just reimburse the client. But that's I, – I, I want to say I know about 42% of our overall claims come through this provider – online network tool, which is a relatively new tool. So providers are still kind of slowly embracing it. Um, but in terms of the number of claims that actually come from the insured, I want to say it's like less than 5%. So that that's a rarity. Okay. All right. And can you write small groups? Yes and no. So Maris is a boatload of group business. That's the majority of our 1.3 billion of dental is, uh, is in the group business. It's more a large group. Um, so could you take this prime star and sell it to, you know, a group of five, a group of seven, a group of 10, you could, but it's a little bit of a square peg in a round hole. And the, and the biggest thing that it doesn't do is list bill. And so what I mean by that is you can't sell seven of these policies and then give a master bill to the employer, which is how it's supposed to work. If the employer wants to take more of an individual approach to it and they say, just sign them up, um, and they can, you know, they can pay for it themselves, almost like in a worksite manner, kind of like an AFLAC or a colonial lifestyle. Uh, it, it works kind of, sort of, in those types of instances. But generally speaking, no, I would just, I would just consider this more of like a true blue individual product. Okay. Uh, next one is, is there a max for things like implants within a policy year or from year to year? Yeah, good question. No, so we don't have individual maxes for some specific procedures, which is starting to become, I don't want to say common, but starting to definitely hit the industry, specifically with implants, because they are a little bit of the aberration to the norm in terms of how expensive they can get. Um, You know, depending on the dentist that you go to, we see a huge variance in what they cost. Um, So no, it's just based upon the overall annual maximum. 
Um, to pontificate a little bit further off of that, what's interesting about implants is it's kind of like a knee replacement or many of the things that you hear about or, he or read in the headlines around, around healthcare. There's still a huge variance. We see implants come through at 3,000. We see implants come through at 20,000, just depending on whether, depending on whom you go to. Um, and so that's one to kind of watch out for. Other than implants, things are competitive enough to where there's not a huge um, delta, I should say, between the pricing. The most expensive dentist in town versus the cheapest dentist in town, they're not going to have but a 10 to 20 percent difference in the cleaning. And so your difference is, you know, 80 bucks to 100 bucks. Yeah, kind of who cares, right? That delta, that um, but the difference between the highest and the lowest isn't so bad in the dental world relative to health, except for implants specifically. There's still a fair amount of variance that exists on that procedure. And so, and so that is one that's definitely worthy to shop around. And that is a reason why some insurance companies have started to impose specific limits on what they'll pay for an implant. Um, it's something that we've looked at. It's something that we're not going to do unless we absolutely have to. And thus far, we haven't had to. So I'm pleased by that. Um, but long answer to your question, no, there's no specific limit. It's just the, the, the overall product limit of $2,000 annually. Okay, and what are the commissions? Yep, so the, the street commissions are 25 and 2, 25% first year, 2% renewal. If you've got, uh, you know, like a, a SGA or an agency with downline, if you work with Premier, they've, they can get you set up to where you can receive an override in those instances. Um, Premier's got our top contract, as you probably all know and already partner with them. They're literally, no pun intended, <laughs> one of the premier companies um, in, in this business. You know, they're, they're one of the top FMOs in the country. And so uh, we, as well as I, really enjoy and appreciate kind of the, the thought leading um, expertise that Premier and Integrity bring to the table. And so with that regard, you're partnering up with, with someone uh, very, very strong who can, abs who can offer you the top commissions that are available for, for this product. As you look at, you know, what does 25% mean to you? Our average um, value for an enrollment is actually now north of $600. I want to say the number is 640. And that assumes that 52% cross sell rate on vision. So it's assuming that you're bringing up vision. Um, and so in those instances, um, let me not uh, let me not do math in my head. Six forty into twenty five. You're usually going to be looking at about one hundred and sixty dollars um, for your first year commission. Is what a dental plan is worth for you? One hundred and sixty bucks. Um, so it's it, it's going to add up to quite a bit. Yeah. I mean, Lisa, you know better than I do. What's what's a yeah. typical what's a typical like med sup commission for uh, for for a street like agent? Annualized? I would say yeah. an annualized premium. I mean, if you got to go off of, I would say it's usually about 21%. And you'll let me do the yeah. math here. <laughs> about, let's just say, $1,400 a year. So what, 21% of that is? 294. I can't do math. 294. So yeah, I mean, it all adds yeah. up. It all adds up. For sure. For sure, and, and that's probably on the high end, I would guess. I mean, that would, you know, 1400 is probably pushing more like a plan F or a more expensive area. You know, if you're yep. coming down to plan G or a plan N, or if you're in Iowa instead of New Jersey or New York, those premiums are all gonna be less. And so with Very. a dental premium, with a dental sale, it's so simple. You, you've now just increased the first year value of your customer by 50% by just doing that dental premium just by doing that dental sale. And so it, it makes a huge difference when you extend that over your entire block of all the customers that you serve. So keep that in mind that you gotta, you've gotta maximize the value. And, and here's what's great about it, is you should feel good in the process of doing so because people want this plan. You know, we, we still see a boatload of dental sales that come through from a couple distributors that all they do is sell dental. They're selling tens of millions of dollars a year in dental that they wouldn't exist if it wasn't for a Medicare agent not talking about dental. So if, if that's not proof, I don't know what is. And I'd like to add something too, Brian, if you don't mind. You know, with Please. Emeritus' online tools, with their online application, it takes no time at all to sign your clients up on it. No time at all. So it really is worth your time and money. I have call centers that will literally do um, uh, end to end enrollment in five minutes, and they'll do the once you're done talking about the product for three or four minutes, 
they'll, they'll do the actual enrollment in under 60 seconds. Once you've done one or two of these, you'll, ble you'll you blaze through the, the process. Definitely. Okay, next question is, what is the website for network provider search? Yeah, so probably the easiest way would be just go to Maris.com and click on providers in the top corner. Um, but with that said, um, if you were to go into your enrollment tool, there's links all on there um, on the provider tool. And you guys can call us too here at Premier. We have all that information as well, so we can definitely get it over to you. Cool, cool. Right. And next one, do you have a waiting time to get back into the plan if you cancel it, and then within six months later, you decide you want the plan again? Formally, yes, and I want to say that that waiting plan is two years. Admittedly, we don't really watch that at a consumer level, but we will watch that at an agency level. Okay. Good to know. And then next question, if you don't mind, Brian, I'll answer this one. It says, how do we begin the contracting process? Uh, with Emeritus. Again, if you guys want to contact your health team here at Premier, uh, we can definitely get you going on that. And the number is 800-365-8208. And if, you, if you're not already working with a health team, just go ahead and ask for one of them and we all can help you out with that. Perfect. Okay, cool. Well, if there's any additional, please feel free to circle back with me, Louisa. Um, I'm getting waved off okay. and I'm, I'm late for my 11 o'clock here. But okay. well, one okay. last thank you. I very much appreciate all of you for taking the time here today to join it. Hopefully it was helpful and hopefully we've got the opportunity in conjunction with Premier to earn from your business this year in 2018. So thanks again, everyone. And thank you, Lisa, for, for helping with everything yep. here today. Yes. Thank you, Brian. This was extremely informative and we appreciate everyone who attended. If you guys have any other questions or just interest in the product information alone, give us a call here at Premier. Again, it's 800-365-8208. So um, everybody have a great day. Thank you for attending.